Hey, Coach. Um, so it, it seemed like for the second straight game, the team had a rough start, particularly in the first half. Um, is there what, what do you have to say about that and um, how they picked it up at the beginning of the second half? Sorry for the, the noise. <laughs> um, I, th I think I heard you correctly. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with how we started the match. And uh, I, think we, I think we probably could have shown a little bit more of, of our identity, especially against the ball, and been a little bit more aggressive. And then with the ball, um, I thought we could have been a little bit more composed and just seen some different options. We had, we had the one big chance, you know, right at the end of the, uh, the half, maybe maybe uh, 15 minutes left, where Drew plays Omir. But other than that, I didn't think we created enough. That said, in the second half, I was really, really happy with the group, proud of the group. Uh, I thought we responded in a really good way, and we were pushing for the goal. You know, we were being ourselves. I think we were making it really difficult on them. They couldn't get out of their half. Um, and we don't, we don't get the game tying goal. And if you leave it like that, and then there becomes a little bit of space and time, and Inter Miami brings on who they bring on, then uh, they're gonna they're gonna find the second. Uh, next, we'll go to Tom Bogert. Tom. Tom. Uh, Coach, you'll probably get a lot of questions about Messi and Busquets tonight, but just kind of more on a macro view, Miami is another team that's chasing the playoff line. So how disappointing was it to lose a you know a cliched six pointer at home against a potential playoff rival? Yeah, that was our, thanks Tom, that was our main focus the whole week was this was a, a three-point opportunity that we wanted, we had a job to do, that we wanted to stay laser focused on that. We didn't want to, you know, get too, too involved in the spectacle of what the night would be. And, um, you know, now, now I would say we have to turn the page really quickly because we go to New England and that's a, a really difficult place to, to go and get three points, but I think we can do it. And I think we, we have to keep believing in ourselves to go chase uh, our goal of making the playoffs. Uh, next, we we'll go to Christian Arnold. Coach, you sort of mentioned the spectacle of, of Messi coming in when he took the field and sort of when the chants were going on earlier in the game. How were you, I guess, trying to keep your team composed so that they stayed focused and not got caught, get, getting caught up in the spectacle of, of kind of what was going on around them? Yeah, I was trying to push the tempo. I, I was trying to get us to continue to do what we were doing. Um, clearly, you could hear that. There was a change that was going to be made, and I don't think I've ever heard uh, any any type of level of noise and excitement, you know, for a, a substitute that's coming into the game. Um, but my reaction was, I think that he was coming up to the touchline to, to come on in the game, and there was a ball that went out for a throw-in, and I was trying to get the ball back in play as quickly as possible uh, so we can push the tempo. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, definitely something I've never experienced before. Uh, next, we we'll go to Casey. Hey, Coach. Obviously, Messi and Busquets didn't start tonight, but Miami did roll out with their three U22 signings. Between their team and your team, a lot of youth on the field. Yeah. How do you think that affected the match, and what does it show for the league just to have so much talented young players on the field on both sides? Yeah, that's a great observation. I, th this is something that I tried to communicate all week long to the group, as well as... Um, something we were well aware of in general that they have a lot of quality that they've added to their roster and we respect that quality the guys that were already there that we played before this year joseph martinez uh taylor um campana is a very good player deandre yedlin calendar but then they added these uh these you know three U u22 players and they're they're top players um and they showed that in the first half they made it very difficult for us but i think it also says that this is, this is the type of model that we typically have, right? So there's seven players on the field for us tonight that are 23 and under, not to mention the guys that came on and Peter Stroud and Wiki Carmona that are just as young, if not younger. So our model is a little bit different. I'm proud of what we showed in the second half. I wish we would have shown that a little bit more over the course of the whole game. Uh, next we'll go to Joe Panterno. Okay. Troy, is there any maybe relief that this is over now and you can sort of maybe put all of your focus on the rest of the season as much as you guys did kind of keep your eyes on the task at hand i can't say that i i no no relief necessarily i think this is such a wonderful opportunity and you only get one shot uh we have time for two more questions with coach first we'll go to james burrell and then we'll finish up with uh gary redmond thanks coach um 
It was announced today, record crowd, 26,000 plus. You commented on how passionate the support was last weekend against DC United. Is there any message you'd like to say to the fans after this one coming in in such big numbers, uh, even yeah. so many in red? 100%. What, what a great question. And I'd, I'd love to use the opportunity to say that any, anyone that was uh, new to the stadium tonight hopefully got to have a great experience, and, and I hope that they come back. And they, and they also got to see so many young players from our club get opportunities our club promotes young players to give them an opportunity to to try to get to the stage of, of uh or the level of someone like jordy alba that's what john michael tolkien's trying to do right now and our club provides that opportunity daniel edelman's trying to get to the level of sergio busquets and um you know they have close to 100 games uh under their belt and and that's a special thing to watch and they competed tonight they competed in a really positive way so those newcomers i hope they come back and they support these young players for, for the supporters that have been there with us the entire year, that it were with us last week. I love the way that they tried to combat the, the noise of the night, you know, the, 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 the messy chants, all the, you know, these, this tough to combat, but our supporters were right there with us. They were pushing us, and we're gonna need them to push us this, this final stretch of the season. And we'll finish up with Gary. Hold. Good evening, Coach. Um, you got one road, w road win under your belt right now. You're going to be playing against a very tough opponent in New England. This is done. You're done with me on Miami. But with, so, with the, the margin of error slim at this point, what are you telling your team from this point over? Because at this point, you're really chasing two teams. But you have an opportunity to make up points, but now you have to do this on the road when you only have one. Yeah. So what are you telling your team at this point? Yeah, I, I, this, was, this was an important message after the game. Right after the game, I wanted them to turn their focus to New England, um, make sure that we recover in the right way, both physically and mentally, from, from this match tonight. And um, I, I, think, I think we can go on the road and get points. I really do. And we have two tough opponents in New England, then Philadelphia. But, but I do think we, we have to pick up points. We know that going into this international break to give ourselves a chance to, to really push for a playoff spot.